It appears that some legislative bombs are landing around this area, and it does pertain back to Ripple XRP and even Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse. This is a really interesting development. Everyone is welcome to join us on the channel. This is Nick, my name. Those of you who are new to the channel, I hope that by the time you reach the conclusion of this video, you will have subscribed to the channel. I was able to establish this connection as well. If we take a moment to pause for a moment and travel back in time to a video that was released not too long ago. This dates back to July of 2023, when the Commissioner of the Commodity Futures Trading Commission CFTC viewed the Ripple Court ruling as a way to get regulatory certainty in the United States. Therefore, he was positive about Ripple, and especially XRP, as well as the decision that XRP was not a security. Now, we now know that Caroline D. Pam, who is the commissioner in this case, also met with Brad Garlinghouse in September of 2022 in the Ripple Labs office headquarters. This information is now available to us. And it's hilarious because we are aware that they have participated in a number of different conversations. In addition to important forum discussions additionally concerning regulatory frameworks and regulations pertaining to cryptocurrencies. Building on this, we also know that Giancarlo, Christopher Giancarlo, was quite positive on the concept that XRP is not a security back in the year 2020. This is something that we take into consideration. And even more recently, he did thank Ripple for having XRP cleared in the Court of Justice back in July of 2023. He wanted to express his congratulations on this accomplishment. On the other hand, this is a former chair of the Commodity Futures Trading Commission CFTC explaining why he believes XRP is not a security. Additionally, a commissioner of the Commodity Futures Trading Commission CFTC who was appointed not too long ago views the Ripple Court ruling as a way to get regulatory certainty in the United States. So it would appear that the Commodity Futures Trading Commission CFTC is quite positive on Ripple and possibly even XRP. On the other hand, more recently, as of the 10th of July, we have from viewpoints that are subjective. The new chair of the Commodity Futures Trading Commission CFTC testifies about the oversight of digital commodities. It is estimated that between 70 and 80 percent of the market is comprised of non-security investments. It's a crucial matter. In your testimony, Mr. Chairman, you indicated that the single most critical thing that Congress needs to do in light of the growing popularity of cryptocurrency is to approve legislation that provides federal control of tokens that are not security tokens. In the event that Congress does not take action to address this regulatory gap, does any federal regulator possess the jurisdiction to control the market for crypto assets such as Bitcoin that are not classified as securities? Thank you for asking, Senator. I appreciate it. To answer the question in a nutshell, the answer is no. And I mean this is the primary reason that we are at this location. The difficulty is that, as you indicated in your opening remark, if you evaluate the economy of Bitcoin by market capitalization, upwards of 70 to 80% of the market is comprised of non-securities. This indicates that there is no direct monitoring from the federal government. Therefore, contrary to what I suppose some people may assume, this results in a massive void a vacuum, and eventually puts clients at danger of losing money. And I believe that our enforcement record over the course of the greater part of 10 years proves that that is the case. Additionally, as you mentioned in your statement, the issue with our enforcement authority is that, despite its capacity, it works in a reactionary manner. If we continue to be in this scenario, we will never be able to be in the lead. When individuals who have traditionally been cheated provide us with tips or complaints, we are always responsive to them. In our conventional regulatory structure, registration and compliance with an existing set of rules are required. This provides the Commodity Futures Trading Commission CFTC or any other market authority with the capacity to investigate a registered organisation, regardless of whether it is a broker, an exchange, a custodian or an individual individual player. It is precisely these kinds of regulatory mechanisms that make it possible for us to completely eradicate, or at the very least greatly reduce, instances of market manipulation and fraud. It is important to note that anything else, which is the current state of affairs with cryptocurrency, is only reactive. We have a very effective enforcement record, which is something that I am extremely proud of, and this committee ought to be as well. From the standpoint of the SEC, this is a humiliating defeat. In addition to this, we also have another indication that Gary Densler is feeling pressured to reduce the amount of regulation that is enforced. 
Let's take things a step further and choose a new chairman of the SEC Gov, who is committed to upholding the law. In addition, I believe that everyone will concur with this, but we are also aware that this is not going to take place in the foreseeable future. In addition to this, however, it is not all that green. For this reason, as well as the fact that we have received information from Katie Biber, why is Caroline Crenshaw, the anti-crypto set commissioner, on the verge of being reconfirmed without the Senate making a single sound? It is odd that the Democrats would approve a commissioner who turned her back on the District of Columbia Circuit Court of Appeals and authored a furious dissent on the SEC's mandated spot bid cuneti for approval. This is in light of the fact that the Democrats have been talking about lawlessness in recent days in response to the Scottish ruling on presidential immunity. Rayscale Investments v. The SEC was a case in which a court comprised of justices nominated by both Republicans and Democrats reached a decision that the SEC did not present a logical explanation for why it did not approve Grayscale's spot bequini TIF app. The court ruled that the CC acted arbitrarily and capriciously, which is a breach of the Administrative Procedure Act APA. Even Gary Gensler conceded to the result that was manifestly accurate presented by the DC Circuit, but Caroline Crenshaw did not share this sentiment. She twisted herself into knots in order to justify defying the court's clear demand to uphold the rule of law, and she did this in this dissenting opinion. This is precisely what conservatives mean when they express concern about bureaucrats who are not accountable to the people. Fortunately, Loverbright was able to smooth up the sales of Chevron, but we still require public officials who are committed to doing the right thing. It is possible that Crenshaw may be reaffirmed this week. There is a need for people to pose some challenging questions. Does the upholding of the rule of law take precedence over her loyalty to shadow President Elizabeth Warren? Is it even possible that President Biden is aware that he has done so again? Or is this part of Gensler's plan to ensure that the Democratic Commission would have a majority in 2025, which would force a newly elected President Trump to remove him from office? This kind of commission equilibrium would guarantee that there would be no regulatory rollbacks and no crypto shift, even if the chair was selected by a Republican. Every single one of these gatherings, these roundtable conversations, are completely pointless. And when Brad Garlinghouse made that statement, he was absolutely correct, let us hope that these comments are not empty words, but rather actions that are taken. And, well, what do you think? Over here, we see that even him saying, you know, he basically reaffirmed that Democrats are continuing to enable Gensler's unconstitutional war on cryptocurrency. This is the anti cryptostance that we continue to see highlighted even around debanking cryptocurrency, going after some of these companies, and all of these other negative things. See, all you have to do is go to the library. I mean, what caused the library to stop operating? <laughs>